Yo, what's up guys? We've got another video here. We have some new fragrance samples and um, in this video, five samples. I'm a little bit late to get around to a few of these, so they were released some time ago. They're kind of new-ish, but they're not like the newest releases out, except for one which just recently came out. Um, so I'll get straight into it. Um, I've got my samples here with me. First, we have Armaf Untold, which is Club de Nui Untold. Second, we have Ralph's Club Parfum. So yes, I'm a little bit late to try the Parfum, and I know they've actually just released an Elixir. So I'm a little bit late to try the Parfum, but I'm gonna review it. Um, we also have Le Beau Parfum, so Again, I'm a little bit late to try the Parfum of Le Beau. Hang on. So, Jean-Paul Gaultier Le Mail. Oh, not Le Mail. I think it is Le Beau Parfum. And then I also have Parfums de Mali Altair. This didn't have a label on it. I had to label it myself, so it's not the greatest. I just read it on some paper. But this is the new Altair by Parfums de Mali. Altair. Um, I might just move these so I don't break them. Okay. And oh uh, yeah, I got one which is a free sample and I just want to review it because it doesn't have a lid on it. So I pretty much have to review this before it all dries out because I've taken the lid off. Well, it's not, it's not an atomizer. It's one of those, what's the word? Um, like a, an oil a wiper thing. I'll show you. I'll show you what I mean. But it's a dabber. I think they're called dabbers. They have these little stick things and you, you dip it in and then you wipe it. But this actually doesn't sit in the bottle like airtight. So um, it is going to dry out if I don't review it. It's called uh, Bergamotto di Calabria by Paris Monte Carlo. Um... So, I have actually tried one other fragrance from this house, which was Arantia di Sicilia. I can't remember if I reviewed that or not. I, I do have a sample of that, but I don't think I actually reviewed it yet. Maybe I have. I cannot remember. If it is, it would be in a video that I haven't uploaded yet, and I've just been too lazy to um, edit that. So, I think we'll start off with probably the most hype one so far, which is Parfums de Mali Altair. So we'll try this. Um, I should have picked a different shirt to wear. Anyway, oh um, uh, yeah, I should I should mention I have already tried all these because these uh, I don't know. I just want to try them. I couldn't wait to film this video, but I'll give you my first impressions because first impressions is still is still something, right? Yeah, so this is this is probably one of the best sweet fragrances from Parfums de Mali. I know they do have like Pegasus, they do have Leighton, they have Carlisle, Herud, um, those types of sweet spicy fragrances. This is different. This is more of a gourmand vanilla, a spicy vanilla, but not like heavy on the spice. This is the like the light spices, like your cardamom and stuff. So. The main thing you're going to smell in Altair is vanilla, cardamom. So very much like the dry down of Leighton. The dry down of Leighton is very um, sweet vanilla with that cardamom and sandalwood in it. And it's, it's a little bit harsh. So the problems I have with Leighton, very sharp opening. It's a little bit too strong. It's not very smooth. Um, the spice is a little bit too strong, too green. That's the right word. So it's too green. And I've always said Leighton would be better if you made it sweeter, more vanilla. You get rid of that sharpness in the opening and some of that greenness, you want to balance it all out because it is very woody, green, spicy when you smell Leighton. This is pretty much everything I said Leighton would be if it was all of those things. So this is like they've, they've taken Leighton, they've made it sweeter and smoother 
and have gotten rid of that greenness to it. So you get cardamom, vanilla, and the dry down, you get a lot of caramel. So this smells a lot like caramel in the dry down, but the opening is pretty much like Leighton. It smells very similar to Leighton in the opening. The dry down though does smell pretty much like your typical gourmand vanilla caramel fragrance. So if you don't know, there's all different types of vanillas, but when you add like caramel or sugar, toffee, something like that to um, vanilla, it it's almost like this, it almost feels resinous or syrupy or there's like a sticky date smell to it, like a date kind of smell there. Um, but yeah, you'll know if you've smelled fragrances like Joy Boy Fire of Will, if you've smelled um, Vaniglia Mazzolari, Vanilla West Indies, Ligna St. Bath, um, maybe even something like Montal's Vanilla Absolute, they all have that kind of um, that caramel smell to them. But overall, yes, it's very nice spicy cardamom. The cardamom is realistic cardamom, so it's there's a little bit of bitterness, a little bit of citrusy smell to it. But overall, it's a nice light kind of um, fresh spice, light and fresh. So with those kind of fresh light spices, you you can also get coriander seed, nutmeg. And yeah, cardamom, coriander seed, nutmeg. Those are like the main ones I smell in fragrances. I'm sure there's probably something else I can't think of right now, but um, they're the main ones that come to my mind right now. Hmm, it, it is delicious. So I like it, but would I wear it? I probably wouldn't wear it because I don't like it that much where I would wear this. The cardamom, still not my style. I'm not a huge fan of cardamom in fragrances, unless it smells soapy. I prefer a soapy cardamom rather than that realistic one. This has the same cardamom that you'd find in the Kenzo Jungle. So I guess you could say it's very similar to Kenzo Jungle in some ways with the cardamom, that realistic cardamom smell. But I do like the dry down. And I do like this more than Leighton. This is better than Leighton. But out of all the Parfums to Mali fragrances, I would rank this like fourth, fourth or fifth best. I prefer um, Percival, Sedley, Greenly, and then maybe Altair. Percival, Sedley, Greenly. Is there any more that I'll prefer? I don't know. I think maybe one of the girls ones, like Oriana or something, might be better than this, just because it's fresh and fruity. But I think I'll rank the I'll rank this fourth, uh, the fourth best from Parfums de Mali right now, because it is better than like Carlisle, Herod, Leighton, Pegasus. I think this is better than those types of um, fragrances. And if you're comparing vanillas, um. Like a Pegasus, Leighton, Altair, which is the best vanilla from Parfums de Mali. Obviously, Altair is the best so far, better than Pegasus and Leighton, Carlisle, all those other ones. Anyway, we'll move on to the next fragrance. Um, Lebo Parfum. Lebo Parfum. I do like the color is actually... It's blue, but here's the thing, right? Coconut fragrances, what color is, what color do you typically think of a coconut? White, okay, white. So when you wear a coconut fragrance, you're supposed to be wearing white clothes because coconut is white, it's associated with the color white. This is the type of fragrance you wanna spray on white clothes but then it's got blue liquid. So that's the problem here, is you can't spray this in white clothes, but the actual scent is designed for white clothes. So that is a huge problem here. Um, 
Blue will absolutely stain your clothes. Yes, it will absolutely stain. Kind of a stupid thing they've done, but... Uh, it is what it is. I guess some people don't really care that much about matching color with fragrance, so... You could spray it on your neck, but... In my opinion, this is not strong enough. It's not really going to last that long on your skin. So you have to spray this on clothes. You don't really have a choice. It's not a very strong fragrance. Um, ironically, John Paul Gaultier usually make beast mode fragrances. Um, the new elixir is beast mode. I'm like, why? Why is that so beast mode? And then you have like Lebo, which just doesn't perform. Like, it's weird to me. But anyway, I'll spray this because I'll let you know what I think. The original Lebo, I didn't like. For some reasons, I can explain. The original Lebo is supposed to be coconut, more of a tropical citrus coconut, vetiver, woody type of fragrance. Oh, and Tonka, yeah, so Tonka, coconut, bit of uh citrus pine i can't i don't know pineapple maybe but you can't smell you can't even smell coconut or the citrus or anything in the original i only really get tonka and vetiver or tonka and cedar in the original um labo um some type of wood i can't really remember exactly because i sold my bottle it didn't perform it's one of those fragrances you can spray 50 times and you just don't smell it. I thought original Lebo, too basic. There was nothing well there. It didn't perform. There was absolutely no reason for me to keep it or wear it. And it's not going to get you compliments when no one can smell it. Of course, some people say, oh, one of my biggest compliment getters. Well, it's probably true because... I've seen girls react to Lebo, and they do like it. So a lot of girls do think Lebo is a good fragrance. It is going to be um, mass appealing. A lot of girls do like it. So there you go. Now, how does this? Enough talking about the original Lebo. Let's talk about the parfum. I do get the pineapple in this. And I do get a much stronger, sweeter smell. So I can smell coconut and pineapple in here. So already, I like this a lot more than the original. This is stronger, but it's still very, very weak for a parfum. Um, initial opening is strong in the opening. It's going to last a pretty good time. But then... As it just dries down, it just disappears. And it's like, where did the fragrance go? So it almost tricks you in the opening. It's like, oh, very strong in the opening. And then, where did it go? So yeah, you smell Tonka, coconut, pineapple. Um, this is a little bit less woody than the original. Yeah, so the EDT is a little bit more woody. And this is more sweeter. Original is, of course, more fresh. I only say fresh because I cannot smell anything in it, um, like the coconut. So, because you can smell coconut in here, this smells a little bit sweeter. Coconut and Tonka, you can also smell the Tonka in this. Um, tonka pretty much smells like vanilla, so it's one of those coconut Tonka, coconut vanilla type of scents. Pineapple, it's not a very realistic pineapple, it's not really that noticeable. You could pretty much wear like Kajal, Lamar, Aventus, all of those other types of pineapple fragrances. You smell the pineapple in them a lot more than this. Um, even if, if this even has pineapple in it, because I'm not 100% sure. I'm pretty sure this one does. Uh, if it's not pineapple, it'd be citrus or something, but yeah. This, it's not bad. I like it. It reminds me of something... I think it reminds me a little bit of um, Born in Roma, Valentino Born in Roma or something like that. It's got this, a very similar smell to me, or I don't know, there's a certain fragrance this reminds me of, 
and if I remember, I'll put it on screen, the name of it somewhere, but I'm pretty sure it's Born in Roma. I'll have to go back and smell Born in Roma because I can't remember exactly what that smells like. But I do remember that was a little bit more like Invictus or Rasasi Hawass. And this is not quite the same, just a little bit similar. It's got a little bit of that powdery, the powdery sweetness. I don't know, the sweetness or the powderiness is the same in this. It's, well, not powdery, but like, Maybe musk, maybe it's musk. Whatever musk they've used, I think is the same in this and Born in Roma. Okay, let's move on to the next fragrance. Armaf, Armaf Untold. There's no point even showing you the label because it's just the homemade label anyway. Um, these samples, I got these from Facebook Fragrance Group, Australian Facebook Fragrance Group. So did I like Armaf Untold? Do I need to spray this? Yeah, I should probably spray it, but I kind of like, I, sh I, don't, I do, but I don't want to spray it for certain reasons. Um, I'll just spray it a little bit for the, the sake of this video, but I'll tell you why. Why I didn't really want to spray it. Beautiful. This is why I didn't want to spray it. I bought a full bottle of this. Um, I have a full bottle of Armaf and Told. So, obviously I sampled it first and I bought this because I absolutely love this. It smells pretty much like Baccarat Rouge 540. Uh, I would say almost identical to Baccarat Rouge 540. But then again, the reasons I'm not going to call it identical is because original Baccarat Rouge 540 has like better better quality ingredients, right? So the quality is more noticeable and I get more anosmic to the original, which makes me think they've used a lot of um, maybe alcohols in it. The original might have more alcohols in it that tends to get a little bit more anosmic to the smell. Um, but original Backright Rouge 540 is a little bit more light, airy, ambery. It's got more of this glass-like texture to it. I don't know if a fragrance can have a texture, but it's got like this glass-like texture where it feels very like shiny or evanescent an effervescence to it, like this crystalline type of like smell. It's very light though, almost like watery. I don't wanna say watery, but you can tell the quality is much better. It's more lighter area, more feminine as well. The original Backward Rouge 540 is more feminine. So the difference with this is it's heavier, it's more dense, it's more woody, and it's more sweet. But pretty much overall, the smell is exactly the same. The differences are more in the textures and the performance and the density of this. So, last longer beast mode. Obviously, last longer beast mode. Very dense, very sweet, very woody. This is more of a masculine version of Baccarat Rouge 540, which some might think it's actually a good thing because. A lot of people actually think Baccarat Rouge 540 is too feminine. So look at this bottle, by the way. This bottle is absolutely gorgeous. This um, iridescence where it turns like rainbow and all these different lighting. But you can see the actual bottle is like red. Red and gold. Still got that Baccarat Rouge 540 kind of bottle. Red and gold with this iridescence to it where it changes color in the lighting and it looks rainbow. So. I'm pretty sure if the lighting was not so great, you could see the red bottle. Like you can see it's clearly red, but then it just turns a little bit like a rainbow. Brilliant design. I love this bottle already. I think it's gorgeous. Um, and the price of this, this is going for like 60 to $70 at Chemist Warehouse right now in Australia. So the price is absolutely brilliant. Um, especially when 
the original goes for over three hundred dollars for a seventy mil. You can get this so much cheaper, under a hundred dollars. Even full retail price is still like ninety dollars or something for this. Absolutely incredible, amazing value. And the smell, it's it's Buckrat Ridge five forty. The smell is Buckrat Ridge five forty. Saffron, syrupy, woody, ambroxan. It's got that syrupy, ambery, resinous smell to it. Um, it is Backright Rouge 540. Um, what else does Backright Rouge 540 have? I think Backright Rouge 540 has like... Um, yeah, I, I don't know what resins are in it. I'd have to look at the notes. But anyway, I'm pretty sure the notes are the exact same anyway. So... I don't think the notes are going to be any different. I will put the notes on the screen for you so you can see. Overall, amazing. I love it so much. I bought a bottle of it. So we'll move on to the next. Okay, Ralph's Club is next. I'll go the other arm this time. And I have actually tried original Ralph's Club too. This bottle leaks as well. Um, I don't know, somewhere around the top here, it was leaking, so I cannot have the bottle a little bit on its side. It's gotta be standing up. Um, okay. Yeah. So, Rouse Club. Controversial fragrance because it's so basic, but it works. It actually works. It's not a love at first sniff. And this pretty much to me smells just like the ADT. Or the ADP, sorry. The ADP and the Parfum. Pretty much similar, very similar fragrances. This, I think, is a little sweeter. Yeah, so this is a little bit more sweeter than the original. I get a little bit more wood in here, so this is a little bit more woody and more tonka vanilla -y. So I think they've got vanilla, tonka, wood. But the main ingredient is lavender. Lavender, lavender, lavender is the main thing. Lavender, tonka, you've got Rolls Club. Lavender, tonka, I think they've used some type of, um, I don't know. It's a masculine lavender, though. Lavender can smell feminine. This is a very masculine lavender. And a very soapy. Soapy masculine lavender. So it smells clean. Even though it's sweet, you do smell very clean. And I like, I like fragrances that make me smell clean, okay? But I like sweet and freshness as well. The freshness comes from the lavender, which is... It's not really something you usually get that much in the fragrances. But I do think there may be bergamot in here. If I remember looking at the notes correctly ages ago. I'll pull up the notes in a minute so I can look. But um, I really like the lavender in here. And it's so basic. Tonka and lavender, that is like the most basic thing ever. But it still smells unique where it doesn't smell like anything else. Of course, people compare it to YSLY Parfum. It's a bit different. YSLY Parfum is not a Tonka vanilla -y fragrance at all, like this. The lavender, yes, the lavender they've used is similar, but YSLY Parfum still has that YSLY DNA in it, so you'll still smell like YSLY if you wear the Parfum. This doesn't smell like, doesn't have that YSLY DNA in there at all. If you, if you only take the lavender out of the Parfum, that's the only similarities to Ralph's Club, is the lavender they've used, okay? So, so keep that in mind, they're not the same. This is pretty much just Lavender, Tonka, I think a little bit of wood, maybe bergamot. Soapy, creamy, masculine, clean, but sweet. Mass appealing, but basic. You can call it boring. Here's the thing. 
performance is really good. That's why it's expensive. It's a par firm. Even the ADP was very long lasting. Performance is good. It's expensive. I do think it's overpriced, especially for Ralph Lauren. Why is Ralph Lauren um, selling fragrances for that expensive? I don't know. They usually sell very cheap fragrances. Either way, it's a great smell. Um, see, I'm wearing black clothes. I would suggest wearing um, this with black clothes because the smell is very classy. If you want to smell very classy, wear something black, like a suit. This is really good to wear with a suit. Black shirt, black t-shirt. Um, but you could wear this with like purple because the lavender, you can you can totally dress that up with like purple, clo uh, purple colors as well. But I would just pretty much say this is, this is a, a black smell. You want to smell like classy, mysterious, sexy, masculine. I associate that with black colors, especially the masculine kind of um, vibe you get from here. The, and yeah, you want to smell masculine. You want to smell bold, but classy. Um, black. Ralph's Club Parfum with black. But yeah, you may not like it. So it's controversial. It gets a lot of hate, but it also gets quite a bit of love as well because because it's basic, you know. Um, it's hard to really hate that much besides being basic, but it, it's hard to love at the same time because it's, yeah, it is basic. So anyway, the next we're going to review is Bergamotto di Calabria. And I will just say, I like how this is shiny, but I don't like how my camera struggles to pick this up. So, this is a free sample, obviously. Um, I think I got it from Libertine or Oligarch. And this is leaking. Oh, not leaking, but I got it on my fingers. So, um, I'll show you how, how the original bottle was, like this. It's supposed to just click in a place like that. So I'm going to leave that. I've got enough on my fingers right now. My fingers are absolutely covered in it. But I'm going to put this on my wrist here. Okay, so. This is a very nice bright citrus. If you like bright citrus fragrances, this is basic citrus and very, very bright. It's, is it high quality though? I don't think it is. I think, well, I think it is and isn't. I think it gives me a toilet spray smell, but I do smell, I do, I do smell like they're using good quality ingredients this time. I think it's just the choice of ingredients they've used. It smells like toilet spray. But I'm not sure if that's due to the actual um, citrus or if they've used like a flower in here or like tea or pedigree or something. Because mm. that, that toilet spray smell I've said in so many videos, it can come from either something green, like pedigree, like tea. It can also come from bad citrus, sometimes grapefruit. Sometimes just a really shitty quality citrus. But fig. Um, fig can also make your you know, fragrance smell like toilet spray. I don't think there's any fig in here at all because it's not fruity. So it must be a flower. It must be some type of flower they've used that I, um, I assume is giving it a toilet spray smell. So I don't know what flower it is. But yeah, to me, it's just pretty much citrus. Bergamot, as you would expect. Bergamot is a very bright citrus. Very, very refreshing. Um, so this is one of those scents that are going to be super refreshing. It's like... It's an uplifting citrus. It, it lifts your mood. It's so bright. So fresh. So clean. Uh, I would totally spray this around my house. 
just to make my house smell really clean. Besides that, I wouldn't wear it. I would not wear it because I just don't really want to smell like this. But I think Paris Monte Carlo, they might be Italian. I think and it's an Italian perfume company or something like that. So a lot of their smells are supposed to smell like Italy. They're supposed to have Italian ingredients in them. That's why you would generally, generally get like Sicilian lemon. You would get like bergamot. Um, I'm not too good with Italian ingredients. I don't really know that many Italian ingredients. Just besides like... I think Osmanthus is Italian. But I don't think they have any Osmanthus fragrances that I know of. But I do know... Um, I do know that smell of Italy. Like... It's like you can imagine what, the, what it would smell like if you walk through like the streets of Italy. You would know that smell. So anyway, um, I just want to pull up the notes for Bergamotto di Calabria. Oh, I forgot to pull up the notes for Ralph Ralph's Club as well. Okay. And there we go. Okay, it's got petty grain in it. So that explains why it smells very toilet like toilet spray. It's got petty grain. And that answers my question. It's that green smell. The flowers were orange blossom neroli jasmine. Um I to I don't really get much of those. Um, it's got iris in it, which is interesting because it's not an iris fragrance to me. It doesn't smell like iris, but whatever. Um, I don't know how to push this back in without it moving around. I really wish I could get this to click back in without breaking the bottle anyway I feel like I'm gonna break the bottle if I force that in there um, yeah I don't want to talk about this fragrance much more anyway I'm gonna end the video here so yeah if I had to rank them all Armaf in told I mean Armaf in told is the best followed by um, do I like Ralph's Club or Lobo more I think I prefer Ralph's Club Parfum a little bit more than Lebo. So we'll go Armaf in Told, Ralph's Club Parfum, Lebo Parfum, um, Altair, fourth, and Bergamotto, last. Yep. So that would be five. Thank you for watching and hope you all have a lovely day. And I'm sorry that I'm taking forever to upload all these videos. I am pathetic with um, editing, so if anyone wants to edit my videos, I can send you videos to edit for me. Um, I'll pay you to edit my videos. If you want a job, you want to edit videos, you can watch my cringe parts that I, I usually edit out. Anyways, um, thanks for watching. Have a good day, everyone. And if you are interested in any of these fragrances, I hope my advice helps you pick one to buy. So, peace.